welcome to education on cloud i am dr sonali here for class 10 science we have a chapter named acid bases and salt we have already discussed this chapter in this uh, acids are the substances we which we have the salt to test we have studied in the very small level school level 5th 6th standard you would have studied the salt to test and the bitter to test salt to test are acids and bitter to test are bases and when acid and base combines you get salt and water so let us see acid generally have a watery touch and sour test okay so well, sour test is acid like for example some acids are highly corrosive in nature and can cause severe burns like uh, sulfuric acid hydrochloric acid can cause severe burns bases are generally has soapy touch and bitter to test so soluble bases have corrosive action and they can cause severe burns okay so examples also we can write here for acids uh, uh, hydrochloric acid like hcl we can say h2so4 are the examples okay so these are the examples and the basis examples are here like sodium hydroxide is a base okay then detergent powder is there that is also base hmm? so these are the example of base okay now aqueous solution of acid and base are good conductor of electricity like hcl when dissolved in water gives h plus and cl minus so that free ions which are providing passage for electric current so that is why they are very good conductor of electricity so like if we say hcl how it breaks it breaks as h plus and cl minus okay so this free ions are providing passage for electric current okay that is why they are very good conductors of electricity okay hmm. next we are seeing an acid is a compound that dissolves in water to give hydronium ion and the uh, only positively uh, as the only positively charged ions like for example just now we have seen like h2so4 suppose an acid it breaks to 2h plus and so4 2 minus okay so these are the hydronium ions which we are discussing here then uh, an alkali is a compound when dissolving in water hydroxyl ion as the only negatively charged ions so if we say sodium hydroxide is a, a, a base it breaks as na plus and oh minus so these are called hydroxyl ion okay which base is giving so the an oxide or hydroxide of a metal that reacts with acid to form salt and water as the only product is called a base okay so an oxide or hydroxide of a metal that reacts with acid to form a salt and water like for example if we say oxide or hydroxide so this is called sodium hydroxide okay what is the name sodium hydroxide so when it dissolves reacts with acid to form salt and water so hydrochloric acid if we see the reaction then you are getting salt sodium chloride and water okay hmm. so this is sodium hydroxide is called base what is it called base okay now all bases or alkalis have a positively charged metallic ion except ammonium hydroxide which has a positively charged radical like NH4 plus okay ammonium radical the separation of H plus ions from an acid takes place only in the presence of water the separated H plus ion can exist independently and hence combines with water molecule to form hydronium ion hydronium ion so H3 O plus ions are called hydronium ion an acid containing at least possible amount of water is called concentrated acid ok now an acid containing large amount of water is called dilute acid okay then uh, if we add lot of water in concentrated acid and we make it dilute acid like that the process of mixing water in an acid is called dilution of acid when you dilute an acid always add acid slowly to water and continuously stir the mixture because the reaction is exothermic and it can cause spurting so because it generates liberates large amount of energy and that is why it can cause spurting and it can hurt a person who is preparing a solution so that is why you should follow the concept what you should do always add acid 
slowly to water okay not water to acid an alkali containing at least possible amount of water is called concentrated alkali okay similarly dilution of an alkali lowers the concentration of h plus or oh minus ions per unit volume because you are adding more water now what is ph scale ph scale is the measure of concentration of h plus in a particular solution okay like uh, it is a range actually this is called a range okay and uh, below 7 this is called acidic range substances will be acid above 7 substances will be base okay and 7 will be neutral so water generally has ph 7 acids will come below 7 bases will come above 7 value so ph is the measure of concentration of h plus ion in a particular solution in the word p stands for potential of hertz and the power is h plus ion concentration so on the ph scale the concentration is measured from 0 to 14 0 is for highly acidic and 14 is for highly basic okay so we can measure it here we can say also here so here highly acidic okay and here highly basic okay then pH of distilled water and neutral solution is always 7 if the pH of a solution less than 7 then it is an acidic solution okay when the pH of solution decreases from 7 to 0 the concentration of H plus ions it goes increasing and does acidic character of the solution so like sulfuric acid HCl which has pH less than 2 also okay so they are very strong acids if the pH of solution increases from 7 to 14 then the concentration decreases of H plus ion and OH minus ion increases so the neutral solution becomes more and more alkaline so like strong bases like sodium hydroxide potassium hydroxide pH is almost equals to uh, uh, 13 14 like that okay so pH is generally measured by pH paper which is prepared in impregnating a filter paper in a solution uh, of a universal indicator and then drying so that paper will look here yellow in color or white in color when you dip it in specific solution it will change the color and you will have a color uh, different color uh, panel or the card you can match with that card and according to color you can observe it the pH of the substance like uh, if suppose you are putting in lemon juice and the color is changing to uh, orange -ish, so it means the pH is acidic if its color is changing if, if you are putting in detergent water and uh, if the color is changing to violet or blue color it means it is strongly alkaline like that ok so we can see here the pH changes so from dark red okay whenever pH is 0 the color will be dark red 1 red 2 red 3 is orange red 4 is orange 5 is orange yellow 6 is greenish yellow 7 is green okay and 8 pH 8 will be greenish blue then you can see here here the red orange and yellow after that it is blue purple and violet like that so greenish blue pH 9 is blue pH 10 is navy blue 11 is purple 12 is dark purple 13 is violet and 14 is deep violet in color ok so acid base indicators are organic dyes derived from the plant material that shows the presence of acids and bases by color change so litmus is also one of the paper you would have seen blue litmus and the red litmus in the laboratory ok so whenever red litmus is turning to blue blue is for basic it means substance is basic blue litmus turning to red red means it is acidic ok so litmus is natural indicator extracted from plant belong to thallophyte family so we can say here whenever blue litmus changing to red ok this substance is acid and red litmus changing to blue so substance is base ok so the dyes from the plant such as red cabbage leaves colored uh, petals of plant such as petunia and turmeric are other natural indicators ok it shows the 
uh, yellow cabbage purple cabbage will shows all the universal indicator it is called because it shows all the ph in different medium okay so phenolphthalein and methyl orange are the synthetic indicators which shows the presence of acids and bases so in presence of base like uh, if sodium hydroxide is touched with phenolphthalein so sodium hydroxide will turn pink in presence of phenolphthalein okay and the acid will turn methyl orange or oh, it is golden yellow to orange in color like this okay blue litmus solution turns red in acidic solution but it is not affected in basic solution and red litmus turns blue in basic solution but it is not affected in acidic solution okay then phenolphthalein turns pink in basic solution but colorless in acidic solution okay and methyl orange is yellow in basic medium and pink in acidic medium just now we have discussed now turmeric turns brown in basic solution and remains yellow in acidic solution okay the substance whose smell changes in acidic or basic medium are called olfactory indicators okay so olfactory organ is are called about uh, smell like acid reacts with active metal to form salts of the metals and liberate hydrogen gas active metals are sodium potassium calcium like active metal combines with acid gives salt and hydrogen like for example if we say mm, sodium or magnesium if we say okay now balance equation so magnesium reacts with hcl hydrogen gas is liberated okay acid reacts with metal carbonates to form their respective metal salts water and carbon dioxide like metal carbonates reacts with an acid you get metal salt water and carbon dioxide gas is liberated acid reacts with metal hydrogen carbonates like bicarbonate we can say nahco3 so soda bicarb the baking soda which is used here for edible soda respective metal salts water and carbon dioxide so uh, here metal hydrogen carbonate sodium bicarbonate and hcl gives metal salt sodium uh, we can say here the uh, hcl if you are using sodium chloride water and carbon dioxide will obtain so acid reacts with metal oxide to form their respective salts and water is the only product metal oxide very acts with acid you get uh, metal salts and water similarly acid reacts with metal hydroxide and to form their respective salts and water is the only product like for for example if we say here the acid is hcl and the metal hydroxide is naoh sodium hydroxide reacts with hcl you get metal salt and water okay similarly substances which reacts with acid to form salt and water have the only product called basic substance so oxides and hydroxides of metals are bases okay so oxides and hydroxides we can say like calcium oxide is a base and uh, hydroxide if we say magnesium hydroxide or we can say sodium hydroxide are bases okay a chemical reaction in which acid reacts completely with a base to form salt and water as the only product is called neutralization reaction okay so here acid reacts with base koh potassium hydroxide reacts with uh, hcl you get kcl and water this is the example of uh, base acid salt and water neutralization reaction okay all oxides of metals are insoluble in water okay thank you hello good morning i am dr sonali here we are here on education on cloud for class 10 science we are doing a chapter named acid bases and salt okay under this chapter we are going to see now all hydroxides of metals okay are insoluble in water except hydroxides of uh, sodium potassium calcium and magnesium if we say hydroxides of sodium that is sodium hydroxide okay let's see another color sodium hydroxide potassium hydroxide calcium hydroxide and magnesium hydroxide these are soluble in water except these others are insoluble in water okay soluble hydroxides of metals are called alkalis okay so naoh koh they are soluble so they are called alkalis okay hmm? 
then an acid solution which produces more H plus ions in uh, for an aqueous solution of one molar concentration which is called strong acid. So, what is strong acid? We have two types of acid strong acid and weak acid. Strong acids which ionizes completely and when they ionizes completely they give large number of H plus ions and weak acids which ionizes partially. So, they give less number of ions as well as undissociated molecule also will be present. So, for example, we have a strong acid HCl. So, when HCl ion ionizes it ionizes completely reaction goes to completion plenty of H plus and C L minus will be obtained. Then sulfuric acid plenty of H plus and sulphate ions SO4 2 minus will be there. Nitric acid plenty of H plus and NO3 minus nitrate ions will be present. So, what we can define this? These all are called as strong acids. Okay? Why? Because strong acid one more property is there they ionizes completely ok they ionizes completely next we are seeing here an acid which produces few H plus ions for an aqueous solution of one molar concentration is called weak acid. So, that is why we are showing reversible arrow. Why? Because we have uh, it ionizes partially. So, we have some ions as well as some undissociated molecule also. For example, we have here what is this name of this acid? Acetic acid. So, acetic acid ionizes partially. Okay? It ionizes partially. Ionizes partially means number number of ions will be less be because undissociated acetic acid molecule also will be present. Okay? So, these kind of acids are called weak acids. Okay? Next we are seeing here the sulfuric acid the formula all of you know just now we have discussed the ionization also H 2 SO 4 is called sulfuric acid. Okay? Hydrochloric acid is HCl and nitric acid is HNO3, okay. phosphoric acid is H3PO4. So, these are the acids which are the example of strong acids. Okay. Then we have few more examples that is carbonic acid H2CO3, sulfurous acid H2SO3. See sulfuric acid it was H2SO4, this is H2SO3 and acetic acid CH3COOH okay, are the examples of weak acids. Now an alkali which produces more OH minus ions in an aqueous solution of one molar concentration is only called strong alkali. Okay. So, now we are seeing here sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide which ionizes completely. When they completely ionize plenty of ions they will produce that is why they are called strong acids. Okay. So, uh, we can say these are strong bases okay. like plenty of OH minus ions they are giving. So, they are called strong bases. Hmm? So, uh, what is the characteristic of strong ba base? Now, here ionizes completely. Okay. Now, same way we can talk uh, weak bases also which produces few OH minus ions for an aqueous solution of one molar concentration is called weak alkali. So, like calcium hydroxide there is a formula all of you familiar CaOH twice or magnesium hydroxide MgOH twice okay, and ammonium hydroxide are example of weak bases. Okay. So, why weak bases? Weak bases we will show with the reversible arrow. Plenty of ions would not be present because ionization is not complete. It is partial. So, uh, some ions will be there, some unders undissociated molecule also will be present. Okay. So, what is the name of this? This is calcium hydroxide. Why it is called weak base? Because it ionizes partially. Okay. Next, we are seeing some animals and plants uh, employ acids or alkalis for their self-defense. So, they uh, have for their self-defense when they are in danger or they are in some kind of scary situation, they eject acids from their body. So, that is their self-defense. So, the uh, 
uh, whatever we can say opponent or enemy will get hurt by that acid like for example honeybees so if honeybee stings that sting will have a acidic substance that substance when honeybee stings immediately you will see the part will be swollen of human body only i am talking the part will be little swollen and you will start feeling burning sensation why because the acid will be given that is the self defense for honeybee same way ants also the ant is very tiny but it bites why what is it bites means it is a self defense when it bites you, you it, it is leaving some acid in the body and that formic acid so that formic acid when it is left there is a small kind of rash and the itching and burning sensation will be present there so that is the self defense so these are the self defense of animals for their uh, security so an ionic compound containing a positive ion other than hydrogen ion and negative ion other than the hydroxyl ion is only called salt like for example sodium chloride is a salt okay so it is giving positive ion when nacl breaks it gives na plus and cl minus so positive ion other than h plus and negative ion other than oh minus so it gives na plus and cl minus so this is also called a salt so all of you are eating at home every day table salt in food also you will be adding this salt this is only the formula for that salt is sodium chloride that is called table salt okay now all the salts having same negative ions but different metallic ion is called family of salts then conversely we can say the salts having same positive metallic ion and different non metallic ion is called family of salt that way also it's fine so the salt formed by the action of strong acid with strong base is called normal salt now we can see here the strong acid this is hydrochloric acid strong base is sodium hydroxide what are you getting you are getting a salt and water okay so this will be salt it is called normal salt why because neutralization will be complete this is strong acid and this is strong base so which kind of salt you are getting normal salt okay why normal salt you are getting because both are strong so neutralization is complete now any one is strong so neutralization is incomplete so salt will have more of that character suppose we take strong acid and weak base so number of h plus ions will be more so the salt will have more acidic character so that is called acidic salt if we take strong base and the weak uh, acid so in that case number of oh minus ions will be more so salt will have more of basic character so that is called basic salt okay so like this we are seeing now uh, the salt formed by the action of strong acid and weak base are called acidic salt so strong acid is hydrochloric acid and weak base is ammonium hydroxide so what kind of salt we get because acid is strong so number of h plus ions will be more so you are getting a acidic salt okay what kind of salt will be obtained by this reaction ammonium chloride plus water okay so this salt is called acidic salt why it is called acidic salt that also we will write here number of h plus ions will be more okay next we are seeing here the salts formed by the action of weak acid and strong alkalis called basic salt now here we are taking here the strong base and weak acid now what will happen number of oh minus ions will be more so salt will have more of basic character okay so what kind of salt will form ch3 coo na sodium acetate and water okay what is the name of this salt sodium acetate what kind of salt this is this is a basic salt why it is a basic salt as number of oh minus ions will be more okay 
now common salt is the most important salt and uh, most abundant salt in nature in addition to its use in edible salt it is also used as a raw material for producing chemicals such as chlorine hydrogen sodium hydrochloric acid different kind of uh, products can be prepared in acl from nacl you can prepare chlorine you can prepare hydrogen you can prepare sodium and you can prepare hydrochloric acid also by different means okay now uh, when saturated common salt is electrolyzed the products are sodium hydroxide hydrogen and chlorine gas okay so nacl is that is called brine solution saturated so common salt is called brine solution okay so when brine solution this is the very popular manufacturing method for sodium hydroxide so brine solution is used and it is whenever it is dissociates with uh, reacts with water it gives sodium hydroxide and hydrogen and chlorine gas will be the side products that is the manufacturing method of sodium hydroxide now hydrogen gas can be used as oxyhydrogen flames oxyhydrogen flames has a very good melting point temperature and that is why it can be used for uh, different kind of uh, welding or melting this kind of soldering this kind of purpose okay then hydrogenation of vegetable oil vegetable oil in presence of hydrogen like vegetable oil plus hydrogen in presence of a catalyst nickel or platinum catalyst will be used and solid fat solid ghee or we can say solid fat vanaspati ghee that is called that kind of ghee will be produced by from vegetable oil by this hydrogenation hydrogenation means addition of hydrogen okay manufacturing of ammonia and hydrochloric acid ammonia also can be manufactured from hydrogen gas that is the n2 plus 3h2 gives 2nh3 this is ammonia manufacturing this is called uh, manufacturing of ammonia by haber's process very very popular commercial process okay and as a rocket fuel also hydrogen gas fuel fuel cells can be used okay next we are saying chlorine gas where it can be used it is used as a disinfecting water all of us know uh, like in swimming pools and in the drinking water supply also disinfection will be done by supplying spread uh, sending chlorine gas into that so in manufacturing of bleaching powder like calcium oxychloride hydrochloric acid and different pesticides also can be prepared with this in bleaching wood pulp and cotton fabric also can be done then in the manufacturing of polyvinyl chloride that is called pvc polyvinyl chloride okay that is used in pipes you have seen underground plastic pipes polymer pipes that is called polyvinyl chloride and chlorofluorocarbon cfcs chlorofluorocarbons are also used very extensively it is having application now sodium hydroxide can be used in manufacturing of all kind of soaps and detergents so like uh, uh, the fatty oil fatty oil will be treated with sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide so you are getting salt of that fatty oil fatty acids okay so fatty acid salt when you get you if you are having uh, treating it with sodium hydroxide you get sodium soap and uh, that salt is called sodium soap and uh, if you are treating with potassium hydroxide it will you are getting a potassium soap so there are two types of soaps sodium soaps are the we have here sodium soaps are the hard soaps okay hard means it is not hard to touch okay it is not about hard to touch it is sodium soaps means it is used in washing powder washing purposes okay so washing powder cannot be used for bathing so that kind of soap which is not good for skin but it is useful for uh, removal of dust or removal of stains grease oily substances so that is called the grease or dish wash bar all this comes under sodium soap okay Th that is why it is called hard soap soft soap will be potassium soaps which is good for uh, human skin or body so shampoos then the body bathing soap then the face washes all this will be potassium soaps okay because it is soft for the 
body soft for the skin so and detergents detergents are also used for washing purpose only it can be wash any medium it can be used for washing a floor washing a surface washing a glass wood or it can be used for washing fab fabric also correct na so making paper pulp in paper industry sodium hydroxide can be used for paper pulp making also then making artificial fibers like rayon and nylon rayon and nylon are actually uh, artificial fiber but the starting material will be uh, here the natural fiber like cellulose cellulose will be obtained from the plant based material so that is why they are called semi synthetic fiber why semi synthetic fiber because natural fiber will be taken and it will be treated in the lab with sodium hydroxide so it will be converted into a rayon or uh, what we can say nylon kind of uh, substance nylon uh, cannot be prepared nylon is the totally synthetic fiber rayon is semi synthetic fiber okay so rayon will be from cellulose by treatment of sodium hydroxide in the lab okay so because starting material is uh, uh, is the natural substance and you are using synthetic substance sodium hydroxide on that so semi synthetic fiber will be used for degreasing surface of metal okay so detergents will be generally used for this purpose then and making bleach bleaching agents such as sodium hypochlorite sodium hypochlorite is used in a very good bleaching agent like you would have seen in the market many bleaching agents are available in the liquid form as well as in the powder form also so that will be used for stain removal or making the uh, whiter clothes more white or any kind of uh, uh, you can say any surface which you have to make it very sparkling white so there bleaching can be done so all the stains will be removed by sodium hypochlorite okay now bleaching powder all of you are familiar with bleaching powder is prepared by passing chlorine gas through freshly prepared slake lime paste this is called slake lime paste calcium hydroxide and chlorine will be passed into that so you are getting bleaching powder this is the bleaching powder okay till it stops reacting so bleaching powder will use for a bleaching action for a different kind of bleaching action it can be used for bleaching pulp also as well as paper pulp also you would have seen the newspaper which you get which is very white in color but bleaching will be done because actually when the pulp is obtained it is not that much white so that bleaching will be done by this kind of bleaching powder as well as it is used for disinfectants also so there are many application for bleaching cotton fabric and wood pulp also then making unshrinkable wool this is the synthetic wool which is not shrinking or which is not giving any wrinkles okay so uh, jackets and uh, wind sheeters and all will be prepared by that then in the manufacturing of chloroform chloroform is used uh, as a uh, olden times it was used as anesthetic nowadays it is not used as anesthetic but uh, it is still used in the uh, laboratory at many applications are there olden times there was a dissection also in the biology labs or zoology labs so all the frogs and the uh, scolidons and the fishes will be uh, dipped into chloroform so they will lose their consciousness and then the dissection will be easy like that so nowadays direct dissection is only banned so it is not there but uh, chloroform has many other applications application in different kind of uh, uh, now different kind of organic compounds preparation then in sterilization of drinking water uh, bleaching powder can be used for purification then disinfectant laboratories drains and ditches so this is very good disinfectant okay because pest can be killed by this now baking soda baking soda is very much used in the uh, baking uh, kind of processes so where you are seeing the cake pastries and the breads will be baked there this, this kind of soda will, will be used this is called soda bicarbonate so this is nothing else but baking soda soda bicarbonate is a mixture of sodium and bicarbonate ion okay and it is having some kind of small amount of aluminum silicate also in that and which is used in any kind of batter the semi solid batter when it is used what will happen when the heating will start it will liberate carbon dioxide so NHCO3 will liberate CO2 so you can see the small small holes like if you are seeing freshly baked bread so bread also you will have small holes in that that pores will be obtained when the NHCO3 will break and carbon dioxide gas will liberate so from wherever carbon dioxide gas liberates their small hole is generated so that spongy texture uh, people like to eat so that is why in that kind of uh, articles like cake or pastries or the bread this will be used sodium bicarbonate so how it is prepared it is prepared by we can see here 
from common salt by passing carbon dioxide gas through saturated ammonical salt solution. Now, sodium chloride is a common salt and uh, ammonia is passed through it in presence of carbon dioxide. So, you are getting ammonium chloride and sodium bicarbonate. Okay. Now, what is other uses for sodium bicarbonate? Making baking powder, baking soda can be used for making powder as a constituent of antacids and uh, in fire extinguisher. Why con constituent of antacids? Antacids means whenever a person is suff suffering from more acid in the body, body is generating acid and person is not eating in time to break that food. So, lot of acid is generated and that is what the person will feel acidity. So, antacid to kill that acidity, we are using a, a solution which is having a basic character. So, acid and base when they combine you are getting a neutralized character. So, that is why you are using as antacid this substance. So, this will neutralize the effect of acidity and person will start feeling better. In fire extinguisher also it is used uh, to uh, put off the fire. Okay. Now, soda ash, anhydrous sodium carbonate is prepared by strongly heating baking soda. Now, baking soda when strongly heated, what will happen? You are having carbon dioxide gas will liberate as well as anhydrous sodium carbonate will liberate. That is only called soda ash. Okay. Washing soda is hydrated sodium carbonate. Sodium carbonate will have 10 molecules of water of hydration. This is only called washing soda and this will be used for different washing purpose. Dissolving soda ash, this is soda ash, sodium carbonate is soda ash in water and then crystallizing it. So, you are getting washing soda in the form of crystals. Okay. Then washing soda and soda ash is used in softening of hard water. All of you know, uh, again I am talking about this water is also two types. One is called hard water and soft water. It is nothing about touch, hard to touch or soft to touch. It is about the dissolved salts present in it. So, some, some water are having lot of magnesium and calcium salts dissolved in it and that is why they are called hard water. They does not give lather properly with the detergent. So, they are hard water and uh, they are not good for drinking purpose also. So, that is why there are different kind of purifiers are there in the market to purify that uh, dissolved ions in from that and that is why you are getting a pure water because uh, most of the kidney stone which you are hearing it that is the gallbladder stone and kidney stone is nothing else but uh, it nothing nobody is eating stone and getting stone in the kidney that is about the deposition of salt in the body. So, lot of hard water whenever you are consuming it that salt deposition will happen and that salt will deposition will happen in the body itself and that will be nowadays there are different methods to remove that. But, uh, uh, that will be causing a more problem to a person. Okay. So, washing soda and soda ash is used in softening of hard water. So, hard water can be softened by addition of this. Okay. In manufacturing of glass and dry soaps, okay, this is a raw material for glass manufacturing and soap manufacturing also. As a common cleansing agent in household, washing soda can be used for cleansing agent. It can be used for surface cleaning as well as cloth cleaning or any surface also. Then in the manufacturing of caustic soda, boron and sodium phosphate these are the uh, lab laboratory purposes this kind of substances will be prepared and uh, this is the starting material for many other components also. So, that is why this can be prepared using soda. Now, washing soda. So, the fixed number of water molecule which are in the loose combination with one molecule of a salt is only called water of crystallization. Okay. So, let us see what is water of crystallization. Now, plaster of Paris you would have heard about the name is chemically calcium sulphate hemihydrate. Okay. Calcium sulphate hemi hydrate it is called uh, plaster of Paris. It is used by prepared by prolonged heating gypsum and a control temperature of 100 degrees centigrade. Now, this is gypsum prolonged heating at 100 degrees Celsius you are getting here what you are getting plaster of Paris. Okay. So, where plaster of Paris is used all of you are familiar with the idols. So, there are different idols which is prepared as well as if person is uh, breaking a bone, bone is getting fractured. So, they are putting plaster that plaster is nothing else but plaster of Paris. Okay. Why that has been put? Because there is no medicine to join the bone by medi uh, consuming any medicine and uh, human will have tendency to do lot of activity. So, if activity is done, the bone will naturally join by itself. Actually, bone is joining by itself only. It is not playing any role in joining of the bone, but the bone should not join wrongly. Otherwise, it will give a problem for activity to a person. That is why that will be 
made a, into a cast and that cast it will be bone should not move and that cast will be kept so bone will join naturally by that particular direction which has to be actually it has to be done. So, plaster of Paris reacts with water to give a hard mass called gypsum. Okay. So, this will react with water to give a hard mass called gypsum. Now, what are the uses? Keeping fracture bones in position just now I told you then in making decorative toys and panel ceiling different type of toys and the idols the god idols or different toys also will be made with that. Okay. Then in making fireproof material fireproof sheets and the fireproof jackets will be made with this. Okay. Then in making blackboard chalks chalks all of you are familiar which is also used by uh, plaster of Paris will be used. Thank you.